Okay, we're going to start by making a center line mark on the cross brace. And this is just the midpoint between these two sides. And now I'm going to also take the center line mark on the neck and line that up and just make a little guideline mark where the edge of the neck should be. And now we've already got our slot cut on the base side. Make sure it's deep enough that when you attach it to the side here that the neck will line up with that center line mark. And now I'm going to take a small C clamp and just use it as a, a stop so that we can uh, have something for the neck to rest to and hold it in place. And this way we can check and make sure that everything's in line with the center line. And now I've also extended a mark from the base block and I've made a mark up here for the center line at the nut. This center line's got to go the length of the guitar to make sure everything's lined up. From the bottom where the sides meet, to the mark on our cross brace, all the way up to the nut. And now I'm just putting a straight edge on here, just to make sure that everything stays in line. And now if you have to adjust the stop and the clamp, uh, you may have to make a little minor adjustment to make sure everything's in line. Again, from the nut to the center block to the bottom block. Okay, now we're going to take the piece that we bent for the cutaway. And now you'll note it's a little thinner than the sides. Um, it's a little closer to the final thickness. And now you're going to see it's going to rest against the cross block and it will be flush with the side of the neck. Now I'm going to put it in place here and I'm going to mark where it comes and meets the slot that's going to, we're going to put in the side of the neck. And I'm also going to mark on both parts, the cutaway and the uh, treble side of the guitar, where those two are going to meet because we're going to have a miter joint here that we have to cut in. So you can see I've got the top and the bottom marks on both pieces. So we'll know where that miter starts and ends. Now I'm just going to take a bevel gauge and just draw some uh, right angle marks here and extend those marks down the length of the side so I know that I'm keeping everything straight and in line. And now on the outside I'm using the top mark. Now we'll have an angle that connects those two, a diagonal across them. On the inside you want to make a bevel mark with the bottom line. And I'm just going to double check the fit there. And you can see we're going to make a bevel angle on there as well. And here again, make sure that you're making your lines right as far as making a your outside mark at the top outermost point and the inside of the bevel on the inside bottom mark. You can see here how those two are connected with the diagonal. And then I'm just going to cut those out, uh, sort of rough cut them with the coping saw. And you can see the cuts here and how we've got the bevel. And here as well. And then we're going to sand them and fit them together. 
you just want to uh, take some fine sandpaper and work these until you've got a really tight fit between the two. You really shouldn't have any kind of a gap between that uh, through the width of the side. And now we're going to glue it up with some uh, epoxy. And I'm going to put it on the brace and the inside of the miter edges. And I'm just going to make a little mark here for where on this piece I want to put the epoxy. Okay, now I've got the epoxy mixed, and I just use a little scrap piece of wood to sort of uh, smear it around on these edges. Make sure you get a nice uh, solid coat over that edge. I'm going to put it on the uh, cutaway piece as well. And I'm going to put a little there uh, where we made that mark, and it's going to hit the uh, cross brace. Then we're going to uh, fit it together here and clamp it in place. And I'm just going to use a spring clamp to hold it against the uh, cross brace. And then I'm going to just hold the joint together with uh, some strong pieces of duct tape any kind of good strong tape that can handle a little pressure will work here just make sure it's all lined up and it's flush with the top And then I let. Uh, then we've gone ahead and made the slot, and cut that where we want it to be. And now I'm going to mark where it intersects the uh, cutaway piece. And like before, cut this slot uh, to the thickness of the side, like you see here. And I'm just uh, going to take a scrap piece and make sure that it fits in there. And now I'm going to do like before and make a uh, bevel. This is actually going to be a right angle. So you want just nice 45 degree miters here. And then that one's going to be to where it's flush with the side of the neck. And then I've put a little scrap block in here with the clamp just so that I have something to clamp the outside piece to. And you want to epoxy these two together just like we did the other joint. And this is what the uh, finished piece looks like glued up. And now I've also shaped a block to fit inside this corner. This is really just a support block just to give that uh, miter joint a little bit of strength. And it also acts as kerfing here as well. But just fit it into that angle and uh, glue it in place with the epoxy as well.